Did you know that the movie Jaws was inspired by a true story? Well, let's go back in time. Back in the year 1916, between July 1st and 12th of that year, five people were attacked along the coast of New Jersey by sharks, and only one of the victims survived. Let's set the scene. It's the middle of the summer along the Jersey Shore. The boardwalk is bustling, the beaches are busy, and the cool ocean water is calling your name. It's Saturday, July 1st at Beach Haven, a resort town on the southern coast of New Jersey. And Charles Epting Van Sant, a 28-year-old man from Philadelphia, was on vacation at the luxurious Angleside Hotel with his family. On that night, just before dinner, Charles decided to take a short swim in the Atlantic Ocean with a dog that he came across on the beach. So, following the dog into the water, Charles jumped in and swam out into the dark ocean waters. A few moments later, Charles' family noticed that he had begun to scream. Fellow bathers in the water believed that Charles was calling out to the dog he had befriended, but the reality of the situation was much darker. Charles was in the midst of a vicious shark attack, and his legs were being ripped apart by a massive beast under the water. After people on the beach and in the water began to realize that Charles was actually being attacked, a lifeguard named Alexander Ott and a bystander named Sheridan Taylor hopped into the water to rescue him. After grabbing a hold of Charles, who was thrashing and screaming, they pulled him ashore. The bystander, Sheridan, would later claim that the bloodthirsty shark followed them in the water all the way up to the beach. At this point, Charles was bleeding profusely as his left thigh was stripped of its flesh, and shortly afterwards, he bled to death on the manager's desk of the Angleside Hotel. This was the first of multiple attacks that would ravage the shore that summer. Despite the brutal attack on Charles Van Sant, kind of like in the movie Jaws, the beaches along the Jersey Shore remained open. And although sea captains who were entering the ports of Newark and New York City reported seeing large sharks swimming off the coast of New Jersey, they were ignored. These captains had tried to warn the public, but no one listened. Fast forward almost a week later to Thursday, July 6, 1916. Spring Lake, New Jersey, 45 miles north of Beach Haven where the first attack occurred, was another beachside community where people from New Jersey came to relax and catch some sun. But on that day, a dark force was waiting out in the waters, preparing to attack. That evening, Charles Bruder, a 27-year-old Swiss bell captain at the Essex and Sussex Hotel, was out on the ocean, swimming 130 yards from the shore. Charles had swam many times in these waters without issue. He knew them like the back of his hand. But that day, while out amongst the waves, a massive shark bit him in the abdomen, tearing apart his insides, and then proceeded to sever both of his legs. According to reports from witnesses, the amount of blood spilling from Charles' mangled body actually turned the water red, like something straight out of a horror movie. After hearing the screams, a woman on the beach notified two lifeguards that a canoe with a red hull had capsized and was floating just at the water's surface. Lifeguards Chris Anderson and George White swiftly rode out to Charles in a lifeboat, but upon discovering his shredded and lifeless corpse, realized he had been bitten by a shark. Although the lifeguards managed to pull Charles from the water, he was in shock and bleeding profusely and bled to death before he could make it to the shore. According to the New York Times, women were panic-stricken and fainted as Bruder's mutilated body was brought ashore. This was the second brutal shark attack along the Jersey Shore in just under a week, and although panic was beginning to set in, people were still venturing out into the dark waters. A week later, on July 12, 1916, the next two major attacks would take place in the Matawan Creek near the town of Keyport, New Jersey. Keyport is a quaint village located just 30 miles north of Spring Lake where the previous attack had occurred, right near the ocean. Keyport itself resembles more of a Midwestern farm town than a beach resort area, and it was the last place anyone at the time expected another attack to occur. Earlier that day, a man named Thomas Cottrell, a sea captain and Matawan resident, was walking home from work across a bridge in town when he spotted an eight-foot-long shark in the creek heading upstream. Obviously, this was alarming to Thomas, and he rushed into town and attempted to tell locals what he had seen in an attempt to warn them. But sadly, the people of Keyport and Matawan dismissed his warnings, citing that he must have been suffering from heat stroke, and no effort was made to tell people to stay out of the water. So now we get to around 2 o'clock p.m. that afternoon. A group of local boys, including Lester Stilwell, age 11, were playing in Matawan Creek together, near a dock called the Wickoff Dock. It was an average summer day. It was hot, the sun was shining, and the kids just wanted to cool off in the water. One of the boys had brought along his pet dog, which was swimming with them as well. While swimming near Wakeoff Dock, the boys claimed they saw what appeared to be an old black weather-beaten board or a weathered log, but they brushed it off as nothing. Lester told his friends to take a look at him as he floated on his back in the water, but as he was floating, he was suddenly and violently pulled beneath the water by a massive shark. Lester's friends were helpless and had no idea what to do as they watched their friend violently being thrashed up and down in the creek as Lester's screams filled the air and his blood filled the water. One boy noticed a dorsal fin poking out of the creek, and it was then when they finally realized that Lester was being attacked by a shark. 
Immediately, the boys got out of the creek and ran to town for help, screaming that their friend Lester was being attacked, and several men, including Watson Stanley Fisher, a local 24-year-old businessman, rushed to help. At first, the adults thought that Lester had been suffering from a seizure and that the boys had imagined the dorsal fin, so they hopped into the water to try locate Lester's body. Quickly though, they realized they were dead wrong. Stanley Fisher, the businessman, was quickly able to find Lester's body under the water, but as he was pulling it up from the bottom of the creek, the shark attacked him as well, ripping into his leg. It was a crazy and chaotic scene, and in the process, Stanley lost Lester's body and it floated back down into the depths. Stanley's heroism had led him right into the mouth of the beast as well. After emerging from the creek, the townspeople realized that Stanley's right thigh had been severely injured and stripped of its flesh, and he would later bleed to death at Monmouth Memorial Hospital in Long Branch at 5.30 p.m. that afternoon. Lester's body was recovered two days later, 150 feet upstream from the Wickoff Dock area on July 14, 1916. But the shark wasn't done that day. The fifth and final victim, Joseph Dunn, a 14-year-old boy from New York City, was attacked half a mile upstream from the Wickoff Dock nearly 30 minutes after the fatal attacks on Lester and Stanley. At the time, Joseph and his friends were swimming in the same Matawan Creek and had yet to hear about the vicious attack that had just unfolded a few hundred feet up the river. The group was still in the water when someone from town ran down to them, yelling at them that they needed to get out of the water because there was a massive bloodthirsty shark somewhere lurking within its depths. Hearing this, Joseph, his friend, and his brother swam to the dock and began to get out of the creek. But just as Joseph was climbing up the ladder to escape the water, the man-eating shark sprung from the creek and chomped down on his left leg. Joseph screamed, and his brother and friend rushed over to help pull him from the shark's jaws, and after a vicious tug-of-war battle with the shark, they managed to pull Joseph out of the water and saved his life. Joseph Dunn was then taken to St. Peter's University Hospital in New Brunswick, where he eventually recovered from the attack, although he lost his leg. After these attacks, the public was in a full-blown panic. Even President Woodrow Wilson got involved and assigned funds specifically to the New Jersey government to help identify and eliminate the shark threat. All across New Jersey and New York, beaches were patrolled by heavily armed guards on boats. Gates were built in the water near the beaches and entire communities were shut down. This story was front page news across the entire nation and everyone was scared to get into the water. In Matawan specifically, where Joseph, Lester, and Stanley were attacked in the creek, a reward of over $2,000 was offered to anyone who could catch and kill a shark in the creek. Residents of Keyport and Matawan patrolled the shoreline for days, firing shotgun rounds into the water and even detonating dynamite in the creek. However, no shark was ever killed or captured in the area. The nickname given to this killer creature would eventually take a hold of the nation, the Matawan Maneater. Multiple people claimed to have captured and killed the man-eater in the following weeks, but one specific case sticks out amongst others. On July 14th, two days after the attacks in the creek, a man named Michael Schleiser was out on a boat in Raritan Bay, the body of water that feeds into the Matawan Creek, only a few miles from the scene of the attacks. As he was on the water, a great white shark attacked his boat. The boat was sinking, and Michael took action and managed to kill the shark with a broken oar before it could kill him. When the shark's stomach was cut open and analyzed, scientists found suspicious fleshy material and bones, and it was eventually determined that the young great white had previously ingested nearly 15 pounds of human flesh, and thus the man-eater story came to an end. There were no more shark attacks on the Jersey Shore that summer, and to this day, they remain far and few. But scientists still don't have a clear answer to the question, what was the Matawan man-eater? The general consensus at the time, and to this day, was that the shark was a great white. Others suggest that it was a bull shark, as they're most commonly found in creeks and rivers and are known to be aggressive. But we decided to go pay Matawan, New Jersey a visit so that we could check out the locations of these brutal attacks ourselves and search for some of our own answers to our questions. So before we go out to Matawan and actually see the, the man-eater sp uh, spots, we're here in our hotel. We bought an RC shark fin that we thought we were going to put in the water and drive around to see if that stirred up any paranormal activity, but we hadn't opened it up yet. And we get all the way here. Very cool looking too. Yeah, and look However, at... However... There's no boat! They did not send us a damn boat! We just opened this up for the first time. There's no actual RC. They sent the remote for us. Yeah, look, we have the damn remote for the thing. But there's no boat. They totally screwed us on this. Shark fin boat. Very misleading. There goes our big investigation thing. Because there's no damn boat in there. I know, look at this thing. It's huge. This would have been great in the water to try stir up some activity. <sighs> well. Now we just gotta get in the water. I know. Stir it up okay. ourselves. 
called up. Beach day. Beach day. Here we are at the beach <laughs> before we go investigate creepy shark murder deaths. Hell yeah. It's kind of crazy. I would assume that this is the body of water that the Matawan man-eater came in into one of these streams through. So this is where the shark was out. Pretty creepy to think. Yeah, of. we were going to swim, but there's like horseshoe crabs everywhere. Plus that great white that people just saw. Another great white shark has been tracked along the Jersey Shore. A 10-foot-long shark named Penny recently pinged off the Ocean City waters near 17th Street, the nonprofit group O Search has been following Penny since she was tagged in North Carolina last month. Four other sharks have pinged near Fire Island, Belmar, and Asbury Park. Marine experts say despite the sightings, attacks are extremely rare. I don't really want to fuck with any great whites today. No. The shark fin would have been perfect right here, but those bastards screwed us over. Yeah, look at that Absolutely horseshoe good. crab, man. There are a ton of horseshoe crabs out here. Go and pick it up. Uh, do it. Oh, here he goes. Here he goes. You got it. You got it. Show it to the camera. Oh, turn it this way. Oh, <laughs> that thing is spooky. Dude, that is a big crab. That's creepy. <laughs> he's kind of cute from the top. From the top. <laughs> I think he's gonna come back for revenge later, Connor. <laughs> so you're gonna find him in I'm your in bed, bed later tonight. <laughs> kind of like the tick last week. Don't talk about that tick. <laughs> there he goes. See yeah, ya, buddy. Man. What do we name him? Krabby? Mr. Krabs? Ronnie. Ronnie? Okay. See you, Ronnie. Adios. That looks better than my like actual handwriting. I know That's it crazy. does. Look at that. <laughs> it's very professional, man. We're only here for a moment. By tomorrow, the spooky will be gone. Spooky never dies. Maybe one of those crabs will jump out and draw it again with its Actually, tail. Actually, that's what we named the crab. Spooky. spooky. Spooky the crab. Where is he? Where'd he go? That's our new mascot. Spooky. Spooky the horseshoe crab. <laughs> I like that. It's really hard to believe that a place with such beauty and a place where so many people come to have fun. Goddamn bucks. Was the scene of such a ghoulish slaughter by the Matawan man-eater. I mean, imagine this massive shark right out here lurking in the bay and then swimming up a river specifically to hunt children. It all happened right where this guy's getting it on. <laughs> it must be mating season, man, because all these crabs, I think so. are, crabs are mad. Good for them. I feel like I shouldn't be watching this. Yeah. I feel like we should give them some space. Good morning. Hey everybody. Uh, <laughs> so last night, not only were we getting eaten alive by bugs on the beach and our shark boat did not have a boat for it, but we also went to the bridge where the shark attack happened. And literally, you can't make this up, there were three cops parked in the lot where you park which I don't know if it's closed or not, but we just didn't really want to find out if it's somewhere you're not supposed to go at night. The cops are literally parked right there and that's the only access that you have to that area. So it's now the next day. We've got a shark puppet. I don't know why the hell I have this thing, but I won it at Dave & Buster's a couple weeks ago. And we're gonna try go visit this area now. And we're gonna have to do our investigation in the daytime, but yeah. Got totally screwed last night. Mm -hmm. How are you feeling, bud? It sucks that we couldn't go to last night, though. I it's know. Really hot today. I know. It's already 81 degrees and it's only 10 in the morning. So good for us. Gippy. Okay. So we're here in Matawan. This is the place where the final shark tax by the Matawan man eater occurred. After the killing spree on the Jersey Shore, this shark came to this area to carry out the rest of its bloody rampage. Now it's interesting that in this town, there are a number of different sharks that we've seen, little memorials, statues that we've come across, including this giant shark nicknamed Mike on a local eatery. It's just funny to have a shark here when you know the brutal history that this exact type of creature enacted on the town. Well, we're gonna get something to eat from here before we start filming and uh, 
Yeah, just kind of interesting, isn't it? Very Creepy. Cool. Creepy as shit to imagine this thing ripping into your leg. Yeah, I wouldn't be too happy about it. No, he doesn't look very happy either. He looks kind of like... Oh, what do you mean? He's, he's smiling. Yeah, he's smiling because he's about to <laughs> rip into your fucking torso. That's All why right. he's smiling. Let's we'll get some seafood. Let's do it, baby. So we're here in Matawan, New Jersey, at the actual location of where the shark attacks took place here. Now, we can't access Wake Off Dock because it's on private property. It's behind a government public works building. So we And can't. it's underwater. And, and it's underwater, it's demolished. <laughs> and like we said earlier, we tried to come out here last night when there would be no cars, but in this lot, the Matawan Police Department was parked. Look behind us. Yeah, I don't know why. I'm not really sure why they why. have a storage unit out here. It's fair. I've never seen something like that, but the dock, did a police person just drive by? <laughs> I just saw that. But the actual bridge memorial for Lester and Watson is right over there. It's got Jaws artwork, just like the shirt that I'm wearing today. We were hoping to be able to do a lot more with this video, use the robotic shark fin in the water, come out here at night, you know, actually visit one of these locations, but. We just kind of got screwed on multiple fronts. Yeah, we <laughs> really video. did. So we're just gonna head over there and do a quick little daytime investigation. This is more of a documentary about the story anyways, but. Okay, let's get this show on the road. All right. Oh, very interesting seeing such a busy road right near this area. All these people that drive by every day and have no idea that this is where these attacks happen. I mean, we asked multiple people, uh, even work in like the city government here, uh, about the Matawa um, shark attacks. And everybody was like, what are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, no one knows that this even happened right here. Pretty scary knowing that. A story like this of a horrific shark attack that attacked multiple people that it's just kind of forgotten about. Yeah. And now in the news, you're seeing that there's sharks that are coming up really close to the river again, so. There it is. You can see the docks on the other side of it, too. Pretty sketchy bridge. Yeah, kind of a creepy ass bridge right here, man. I can feel like I could fall right into the creek. It attacked over there through that tunnel and then came under here down that way and attacked another group of people right at that dock probably i didn't even see it said a dock about 800 feet up the river yeah so, so it's that one probably that one right over there which is crazy to think i mean there's been kind of a lot of rain shortage uh in this area for a while so you can see where the high points of the water usually are but I mean, not being able to see anything that's in this water is pretty fucking scary. What I think is also crazy is they still don't know what the type of shark was. It's never been confirmed. They think it was probably a bull shark. Even could have been a great white is some, what some people have suggested. I think it was probably a bull shark because they're known to come upstream into rivers and stuff like this, especially since this connects right to the ocean. Yeah. So, so close. I mean, I think it's kind of creepy to think that like whatever it was that swam up these roads were very violent creatures. Yeah, it was literally, that's the whole thing. It was hunting humans. The but shark. it wasn't even like eating them. No, it was, well, it was. Remember when they cut open the shark, they found pounds of human flesh inside of it. Let's get some devices out. All right, Lester Stillwell, Watson Stanley Fisher. If you're around here, I know you were attacked and died right here. We would love to talk to you if your energy's still here. You know, people are gonna say it's bullshit, you know, ghosts can, it's daytime. But that's, we've been finding out a lot lately. That's what a lot of people report, having encounters is broad daylight. Oh, yeah. yeah, we want him to climb down there, but just look at the mud. It's just all mud. You wanna know? What kind of shark the Matawan man-eater was? Can you give us a clue? Attack! What? No! Attack. No way! <laughs> no fucking way! Attack, bro! What? <laughs> Yo! <laughs> it is one of them. Lester, Watson, thank you. That is right where the shark attacks happened. That's crazy. That's wild, dude. <laughs> and yeah, I just asked, we want to figure out what type of shark attacked yeah. you. Holy shit, Lester, Watson. Okay, you were attacked out here. 
<laughs> That's crazy. I, kind of, I got a loss for words of like what to ask. Who's here with us right now? I mean, Edmund. Edmund. I mean, you also have to think about it. I mean, the only death that happened in this area wasn't the people who were attacked by the sharks. Yeah. I mean, Native American land. Yeah. Uh, I mean, there's this town is pretty old too. So. It's not just me. It's not just me. That's what I literally was just talking about. Whoa! What the fuck? You literally just said. I'm like, these weren't the only deaths. Oh, there's a, there's a train. Albert. 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 A lot of old names, yeah. too. It's not just me, right? Which is also what I was just saying. Hello. Yo, these are going crazy right now. Hey, guys. We're just here to, to talk to you. I know no one's probably ever come out to try and contact you. Can you tell us about what happened to you? Back in 1916. Some bugs are coming out again, man. That's kind of crazy, though. Yeah, it really is. Attack. It's not just us. Can you tell us about what happened to you down here? I know you said you were attacked. This bridge is fucking sketchy as shit. I know. It feels <laughs> like we're straight water. up about to, to fall in. Wouldn't that be great content? Except for that we'd lose all the content because the camera's Yeah, the wet. camera's <laughs> screwed. Now, at nighttime, this would have been perfect. Yeah. Nobody around. It would have been real nice. <laughs> it's just, this shark is like attacking us. Do you remember what that memorial is for? Do you remember what happened here? They left me. <gasps> they left me. Dude, that is what happened. That's what happened to the kid. His friends got out of the water and an adult had to come grab his body. They left him in the water. Jeez, dude. That's literally exactly what happened. So we're talking to, um, so right now we're literally talking to Lester Stillwell. If we get Lester or Stillwell or something like that. Is this Lester here with us right now? Dude, they left me literally in this water right here. His friends, he got attacked and his friends swam out of the water and left him in there yeah. alone with the shark. Fact! Fact! <laughs> Facts. Facts. True though, like it's that's a fact that they did that. Yeah. Dude, this is actually really good shit. Makes you want to go to Wickoff Dock. Makes me want to see a fucking shark fin coming through here. Dude, me too. Well, we could have seen one. Yeah. We're just here to try to figure out what the type of animal was that attacked you. If it was a shark, a great white shark, a bull shark. Can you tell us? Be quiet and listen. Be quiet and listen. It's kind of hard to do that, buddy. It's, this road's really loud. 19 1900s. <laughs> what the fuck? I feel like this is some of the most like accurate like broad daylight evidence we've talking. ever gotten. Right here, guys. 1900s. Look at the mural. It says right there. 1916. That's the year that these shark attacks took place. Back in the shade. It's almost like the energy of the attacks is just like stained this area too. I'm happy. Are you happy that we're out here talking to you, Lester? Cause no one ever has? Is that why you feel good? Cause I highly doubt anyone has ever come here. We tried to make contact with them. Especially it being like a child. I know, it's really, it's a sad story. Holy shit guys, I gotta say, it's like, it is like 90 degrees out right now and it is so hot in the sun. Here. Lester, Watson. <laughs> it sounds like a kid's spirit, it sounds yeah. like Lester. Okay, let's play a game then. Can you say the words out loud that I'm asking you to say? Can you say hi or hello? Hey! Did you hear that? Hey! Hey! hey again! I feel like nobody's ever tried to come make contact with them. No, and they don't even know what happened. Thank you for saying hello and hey. Let's ask you another question. This is the game. What attacked you in the water? Shark. 
Can you tell me what kind of shark it was that attacked you? Was it a bull shark? Look at that huge wave right there. Okay, is it a good idea to come out and stand above this water? Should we go swimming in the water? Is that pop? Is the bridge about to fucking collapse? We hope not. Can you tell us your name? If it's Lester, say Lester. Well, interesting little mini investigation. I think we were definitely talking to something or someone out here. It shows that there is energy here. Yeah. If you're able to come at night without the police here, maybe even get to the dock where the actual attacks happened, you'd be able to do more. Maybe we'll come out here again with a kayak and see if we can get to the docks. Yeah, we were thinking about doing that. If you guys want us to come out and do like a kayak up to the old wick off dock and do a proper investigation let's get 15,000 likes we'll come and do it yeah yeah <laughs> lester i'm sorry this happened to you and watson we just wanted to say that we're sorry and we're here to listen i don't even want to speak sorry buddy we have to get going but thanks for playing a game with us and for hanging out Maybe we'll see you again. All right, let's get back to the car. I'm sweating my nuts. Just a short hop and a skip from the area where the actual attacks took place is this memorial erected for Lester Stilwell and Watson Stanley Fisher. Now, this just goes to show that even to this day here in Madawan, this crime, well, it's not really a crime, this attack, still resonates with locals and there are still family members from these people who were killed that call this small town home and it's just eerie to think that something so horrible so tragic could happen right here in a, in a tiny town that's really it's somewhat far from the ocean you wouldn't think a shark attack would happen here in a creek but it did and it was a brutal brutal couple of attacks but thanks for watching everybody we hope you enjoyed this little bit of history we're going to be back next week with another full-length episode. This week's episode is just a little short because we're actually moving out of Philadelphia. So we wanted to put something out, but I just didn't have that much time because we're packing all of that. But Connor and I love you guys. Everybody loves you from the Spooky family. And yeah, we'll see you next week when we start our Spooky Summer series. Welcome to Spooky Summer, baby. Let's go. And always, stay, stay spooky. spooky. Woo. <laughs> all right. Hello! <laughs>